outlook and how would it affect the race in 2024? Let's bring in Carl Rove, one of the best in the business, or okay, the best in the business to break down, especially during primary season, who's up and who's down. Carl, how would an indictment affect the overall polls? Because they seem to, in the short term, bolster the former president. Uh, I think that's accurate. Uh, look, I'm, I'm with David French on this, the attorney and New York Times columnist who said, if you're going to base something on an untested theory of law, better not file the case. Uh, Andrew McCarthy, our friend and uh, fellow Fox News contributor, was even more blunt. This is a stupid case. So, uh, you know, if, if the d district attorney moves forward, this is not going to end well for him. Right. And in the short run, it's going to help Donald Trump. It's going to cause people to rally around him. It's going to maybe boost his fundraising a little bit. I've gotten a barrage of fundraising messages from him, which suggests that the, that his campaign has found that this is a useful thing to rally around. Right. On the long, on the other hand, on the over the long haul, it's not going to help because it, even if he wins the case, and I would suspect he would win the case if they do file one, because it's a complicated case involving federal law, state law. No, but and probably even that, yeah, Georgia and Maryland. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser. And what's on tap for today? Well, you just saw it right now, folks. Carl Rowe, Brian Kilmeade talking about short-term, long-term effects of the Alvin Bragg District Attorney of New York, right? The Attorney General there. What's going to happen? Is it going to help him? Is it going to hinder him? Let's get back to the video. I'm going to take it back a few seconds, and I want to comment on something that Carl Rove was saying in terms of a long term, and I completely disagree with that. So let's wind it back, and we'll take it from there. Now that this is a useful thing to rally around, right? On the long, on the other hand, on the over the long haul, it's not going to help because even if he wins the case, and I would suspect he would win the case if they do file one, because it's a complicated case involving. Federal law, state law. No, but and probably even that, yeah, Georgia, and Mar a Lago, and everything else. But just in the big picture, the legal problems aren't going to help in the long run, even if they no. bolster his crowd in the short. See, even Brian Kilmeade's on this. And the amazing thing is here, I basically call Carl, you know, the backstabbing traitor to Trump Rove. And Brian Kilmeade, Brian Kilmeade, and a lot of people on Fox, and that's what we're finding out right now, folks. These people at Fox, these news people, these anchors, they were saying one thing and in the back of their mind they were saying they they hated Trump. They didn't like him at all, but they wanted him on the show. They wanted him on their, you know, on the Fox News platform. They wanted because they knew ratings were just going to go sky high and they knew that the majority of people, the people at Fox News are reminding me of the people at, at the swamp. All right. They're the elites. These are millionaires, folks. These are multi-millionaires in their own right. They're the elites, and they look down upon the people that are watching Fox News. They're, they consider themselves to be above those people. They're no different, I think. They're no different, these people, Carvo, Brian Kilmeade, and others. The way they're portraying themselves right now, all right, all of a sudden, they're coming out. I mean, they're Ron DeSantis, he said, both of them are saying that in the long term, the thing with Georgia, all these other, you know, um, you know, cases that are coming, it's they're going to hurt Trump in the long term. I'm telling you what, folks, I haven't been wrong yet. They are not going to hurt Trump in the long term. There's going to be some short term things. There's going to be a lot of short term things that come in because the news cycle just hits it barrage 24 seven for, a, you know, 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours. Maybe sometimes something's gone for a week or so. But after a while, they just slide off the Teflon of the dawn. That's exactly what they do. Anyways, let's continue and see what else uh, Carl, the traitor backstabbing, you know, Rove has to say, along with his acolyte, Brian Kilmeade. I want to bring you to Ron right. DeSantis this week started taking on the former president. Listen to a little of, the, uh, a little of what he said. What are the differences between you? I mean, obviously, you know, the, the approach to COVID was, was different. I mean, you know, I would have fired somebody like Fauci. I also think just in terms of my approach to leadership, you know, I get personnel in the government who have the agenda of the people and share our agenda. So the way we run the government, I think, is no daily drama, focus on the big picture and put points on the board. So, you know, right now, as I put in the Monmouth poll, as you comment, President's got about a 12-point lead, 20-point in some other polls. How do you feel about Ron DeSantis beginning to hit back? 
Uh, well, first of all, I thought it was wise that he counterpunched and didn't punch. Uh, President Trump unleashed an attack on him, sent his surrogates out to say, here's a big laundry list, one of which was really sort of bizarre. They said, well, you know, he, he restricted people on COVID. Well, remember, President Trump was critical of Governor DeSantis when he was one of the first governors in the country to begin to loosen the restrictions. You know, people could come to the beaches, people could go to restaurants and so forth. And I thought he'd get a really powerful counterpunch when he said, I would have fired Fauci because there was, there was Dr. Fauci alongside... Yep. That's easy to say now in retrospect that I would have fired Fauci. I mean, we all wanted President Trump to fire Fauci, but I just think that that's one of the things that I think that President Trump should have done. But in firing him, he, there should have been somebody that he could have found. But that's the thing that was happening. Everything was going, you know, they were all after him in all aspects, you know, coming at him from the North, the South, the East and the West, and all in between. And if somehow he could have found somebody, even Bricks, Dr. Bricks, what a absolute, you know, backstabbing, you know, POS she turned out to be. I mean, he couldn't trust anybody around him, even those people that he put in a position to go ahead and try to, um, you know, the, the, to put the best names forward that were given to him at that time. But then it turned out that these guys were all backstabbers and they themselves were doing everything that they could to increase their power and decrease the power of President Trump. And I think if somehow he could have found somebody to replace Fauci that would have been almost the same stature, that would have been tremendous. But I just don't think anybody was out there helping him, and I don't know what was going in the background, obviously, of all of that. But it's easy to say, yeah, I would have fired Fauci or whatever. And listen, I like Ron DeSantis. You know, I'd still take Ron DeSantis over anybody the Democrats can throw. But as I've said before, I really think that DeSantis' turn is going to be four years from now. And I still think that a Trump-DeSantis ticket would be a good ticket. Um, and, uh, you know, DeSantis has to wait his turn. But there's no way on earth that DeSantis is going to supplant, you know, Trump unless Trump completely implodes. And that would be if he did out of his own doing, not the media, not anybody else, because the media didn't make Trump. They can't take him down. They can't. The only person that can take Trump down, as I was saying before, is Donald Trump himself. I had President Trump for, for all of 2020. And then the second thing is, he said, he said, I'm a no drama kind of guy. And what he's setting up is a contrast between himself and the former president. Because there are a lot of people who say, you know what, I like what Donald Trump did, but I don't like what we had to put up with. And, you know, the idea, for example, I like Donald Trump a lot, but I don't like all his tweets. They're so mean. And, they're so <laughs> and he's always fighting people. He's always fighting back. I don't like Donald Trump when he does that. Why can't he just make the policies and do that thing? But leave all the drama out. He's such a drama queen. And DeSantis is saying that without the drama, you want to see drama occur? <laughs> Wait till DeSantis becomes president, not in 2024, but afterwards. You don't want to talk about drama? <sighs> just wait. Ron, you haven't seen drama like this. It, you're going to be full face with drama, all the drama that you can manage to have. Example in this current case that he paid $130,000 in hush money to a porn star, a stripper, in order to hide an alleged affair with her. That, does, that, that doesn't help you in a general election when you're trying to get... Doesn't help you? Do we know about that in the general election, Carl Rove? You backstabbing fool. What the hell are you talking about? You know what? I'm going to go ahead and label you with my acronym that I have coined, SIMR. S-I-M-R. Carl S-I-M-R Rove. What's the stand for the acronym SIMR? Stupid, idiotic, moronic, and retarded. You're actually out here today in 2023, March, and you're actually saying that... <laughs> This alleged affair, even it was an affair, alleged, not alleged. It was real. It wasn't real. It was fake. It was true. It was a fraud. It was real. Nobody gives a crap. Nobody gives a, sh uh, you know, an excrement here, Carl. And you're out there. You're basically telling, and here you are again saying, you know what? Give it to a poor. Who cares, Carl? Nobody gives a crap. They really don't. And if you don't know that, you know what? I don't know what the hell you're doing on Fox News.
because you certainly aren't giving away. You certainly aren't, you know, giving a, a, a complete, you know, truthful answer here. Maybe in your heart of hearts, you think that it's going to slow him down. Maybe that's what you want to portray. But then again, you're doing the same thing that everybody else is basically doing. Saying one thing on television, but you don't believe it yourself and you're holding back wing voters. Right. And so what he's trying to say is, is look at me. I'm the governor of Florida who just got reelected by 20 points in what traditionally has been a battleground state. And I did it because I focus on the business. Right. I'm the no drama governor. But and the, I think it's a good thing. Right. And remember, he also had the endorsement of President Trump and he asked for the endorsement of President Trump DeSantis. And you know what? People know him in Florida, no doubt about it. But he's not that household name out over flyover country. Ron DeSantis. All right. So don't just take Florida and think that, you know, just because everything went is great in Florida and Florida is absolutely ruby, ruby, ruby red, which is phenomenal and great. It's no longer a battleground state. It is red. That's no part, obviously, give credit where credit is due to Ron DeSantis ran a great campaign. But you know what? Donald Trump also won Florida back in 2016 prior to DeSantis. And Carl, uh, the president, current president's got 38% approval rating and seems to be heading down. Kamala Harris even worse. Real quick, I don't, I don't eliminate, I don't eliminate Nikki Haley. I don't eliminate Tim Scott, Mike Pompeo, Mike Pence. Do you? <laughs> Brian, kill me, Brian. KM, you kill me, kill me, kill me. Yeah, I don't rule out Nikki Haley, Tim Scott, all these other guys. I don't, really, I don't, you know, they're all. They, they, you know, they could all have a possibility of, w of women. What is that, Vivek um, Kawasaki, or I can't remember his name, I apologize, or whatever. Vivek Ramaswamy, or Swam, Swam whatever. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all good. They're all Republicans, I believe, except for, um, you know, Vivek. Uh, you know, they're all basically establishment candidates. They're some of the elites in the party. I think they're rhinos. And so my question is, I don't know what, Brian's bringing up, but again, this is what Fox News is. You know, they're turning away from Trump. But guess what's going to happen? As the election looms closer, as the nomination is out there, as these guys start to run in the primaries, you're going to start to see that as Trump starts to pile up the numbers, watch them gravitate back to Trump, groveling on their hands and knees, begging him, begging him, oh, please, President Trump, come on my show, come on my show, I need the ratings, what's going on here? And they are going to, and once he wins the nomination, you want to see lap dogs start dancing? Watch these guys, okay, become lap dogs, all right, to President Trump. No, it's early. It's early. Look, it's early. You know, in 2000, George W. Bush, who was the front runner, didn't enter the race until June. I mean, President Trump entered the race unusually early in an attempt to discourage people from running. But look, Ron DeSantis is governor for and with a legislature that's meeting for near, nearly two more months. He's right. got time. So do others. There's plenty of time in the age in which we live with where social media and the Internet have made it easier to raise money and to organize a campaign. Plenty of time for people to get out there. And when Mike Pence issues a book and Mike Pompeo issues a book and go out and talk about yeah. that book and travel the country, they're in essence campaigning without being a candidate. Plenty of time for this race to firm up. Early polls right. don't matter much. Just talk to Rudy Giuliani, the front runner in the Republican nomination in 2008. It is fun, though, Carl. I love it. And I know it is fun, though, Carl. I love it. You know what? Just ask Rudy Giuliani what happened to him. You folks are looking at this picture. I mean, these guys are such dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. And listen, Karl Rove, he did his job with George Bush. We call him, you know, it's called the architect, right? Strategy to win Ohio. Strategy to bring in all the concentration in terms of, you know, the coalition of the evangelicals, um, you know, within the Republican tent. No doubt about it. He did his job. But the thing is, is that we have to remember one thing. These folks have always been about themselves. They are the elites within the party. And now what we knew before, it's not just, it, they're not the, you know, the rank, they're, 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 you know, they're the people above. They're not just the average American, you know, Republican conservative, you know, husband and wife with the children working, you know, a couple of jobs or maybe three jobs, putting food on the table, just getting by, you know, struggling, trying to capture the American dream as much as they can, or at least pass it on to their children. 
this is not these guys here. These guys are just like with the Democrats, the top echelon. They're with the Clintons. You know, they're with the Obamas, you know, with everybody else inside there, with the corporations, you know, doing everything so they can gain power and money and, and influence for themselves and for the people that they represent, which is not the people on the ground. It's not you and me. It's the people in Wall Street. It's the people in Washington, D.C. It's all the higher ups. That's what these guys are for, folks. And that's exactly what's happening at the corporation at Fox News. You think they're for you and I? Heck no. They want us to watch a show. They want us for the advertising revenue and the dollars. But as far as anything else, that's all they want us for. You know that and I know that. And thank God, okay, that we found out where a lot of these people stand because what they say on television is completely different than what they do in their private lives and their texts and other things show it. And that's a load of crap. And we need to know about it. We know about it now. These guys are not on our side. They're not on Trump's side. They're not on conservative side. They're on the side for themselves and the elites and their people in D.C., in the uh, media and um, you know, corporations and all of that. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, like, share, and follow us. Let us know what you think in the comments below. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.